I mean, sunny Los Angeles. Yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, I played in uh, I played in LA on Saturday and then spent the weekend here. So. All right. Okay. Where it's are nice you? Here. Where is everyone? I'm in San Francisco. LA. It's nice here as well. <laughs> Yeah, I'm in Amsterdam, so here it's snowing a bit. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, London here, where it's snowing a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess we're going to play some uh, tracks off the album, and um, I guess you guys have submitted some questions that I can talk about. And uh, um, uh, I have one question. This, okay. uh, I was wondering about the uh, when you when you remix a track, and uh, do we get the parts from the artist? Oh, yeah. Because I, I read uh, someone that uh, one time that you also work with tracks and then just you chop it up yourself. Well, a lot of the time, um, if it's something that, um, I mean, obviously it depends how full the original track is, uh, but sometimes if I know I'm going to be working on a track, I'll take the original version even before I get the parts and I'll just start processing that, um, feeding it through different plugins or guitar pedals or uh, through the modular synth stuff to mess it up and sometimes um, sometimes you end up getting some really interesting uh, sound design results out of just processing the entire track because you've got so much frequency there to play with once you start, once you start filtering and messing around and maybe re-triggering things you can get some really interesting sounds that you just wouldn't be able to get if you were working with all the separate parts we actually do that quite a lot when I'm uh, when I'm working, when I'm working on a remix. I will um, we're always making stems, you know. So I'll put the bass and the strings and the vocal into one sample and then treat that one sample as if it's uh, as if it's one thing, you know. Whenever you whenever you get a load of sounds together, you know, where you, it's got all the frequency in it, a high range, mid range, and low frequency. When you start to kind of filter and mess around and re-trigger, you get some really lush results. That do you have any more questions? Uh, I think I'm up next, yeah. I mean, your sound has changed a lot over the years, but it's still very distinctly your own, and I mean, obviously it's still amazing. And I guess I'm just wondering what's inspired the new album and how you describe how you've changed and what's influenced you. Um, I don't know. It's hard. I mean, obviously I listen back to mixes from, like, the late 90s, and I'm playing at 130 BPM, and it's like, <laughs> wow, what's wrong with this? Um, but you know, we were just playing uh, back then. We were playing a lot of big festival sets, and it was just uh, we were playing big rooms, and that was—I don't know—my sound definitely. I got to the point where I think I got to the point where that that kind of really fast kind of techno sound, trancey techno sound, got so commercial. I just didn't feel like I belonged in those so much in those arenas anymore. So I started playing in different arenas at festivals, maybe the smaller ones, the more intimate ones. And I'm enjoying it a lot more. Do we have any more questions? Yeah, I think I'm up next. Um, basically, just tying up what you were saying about technology and, and having fun, really. When I first saw you New Year's Eve 98, I think it was. You were just there having fun. Right. And it just sounds like you... And then, obviously, you go into all the sort of technology side of things, building the Maven of Ableton mixing. And it just seems like you've got an element of fun back in it again. You know, you've got all this technology yeah. which allows you to do stuff, but yeah. now you're taking it back out of the box, now you're starting mixing again with CDJs with the tractor and so on. You just Absolutely, enjoying yeah. it more. Yeah, I definitely got a bit bogged down with the whole Ableton thing and um, yeah, it got my my uh, my rider, my uh, tech tech setup got really out of control, um, and it was really nice. I, I you know I kind of turned my back on Ableton really as as a DJing format. It just they made it much. Every time they seemed to update it, they made it more and more harder for DJs to use it. Um, I mean, Tractor is basically a Ableton but with a DJ interface on the front of it. And now that they've combined Tractor where you can use the CDJs to control them like as MIDI controllers, it's so much fun because it feels like it feels like you're DJing but then you've got all this fun like effects and looping functions and all that sort of stuff that you get with uh, uh, Ableton. You've got that all built in so that can, uh, you can program it all from the CDJs. So yeah, I, I'm really enjoying that setup. It's like it's, it's a really fun setup. You've got the power of the technology there, but at the same time, it still feels you've got that tactile feel of using the CDJs. And 
I don't actually have it on here. <laughs> <laughs> listening to tracks without uh, <laughs> without the con to context of hearing them either in the album or in a club. So this is this, I've never done one of these before. This is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it's been fun. Well, it's yeah, nice to meet you guys. And uh, yeah, come and say hi when um when I'm in your respective cities. Yeah, I will. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Yeah.